You have offended my family. I think I'm entitled. You want answers. I want the truth. And you have offended a Shaolin temple. You can't handle the truth. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Right of the ramp. Is the drug war driving you crazy? Sure is driving me crazy. You know, it started a lot of people crazy, actually. And uh, today when I began my day, uh, a little news piece came across my desk. And I'm not going to talk about it specifically. But a news piece came across my desk with more craziness in it. Let's just, uh, we'll just, long story short, there's some crazy people out there. And it's it's frustrating sometimes when you're when you're fighting this uh, this war on certain American citizens using non-pharmaceutical, non-alcoholic, tobacco-free drugs, because it in itself is so crazy when you really break it down. The fact that we are under the force of government and guns trying to eliminate a species of plant that doesn't kill people and actually helps heal them and make their lives better, and that people that grow this plant and use it and feel good using it are criminals that need to be separated for society with the strictest of punishments, with sentences that are mandated by law that a judge cannot alter uh, because they are so dangerous to us. I mean, I, I've been doing this show, this is show number 757. I've been doing so many of these shows and so many of these stories that come across your desk day after day, time after time, when you read something like Patricia Spotted Crow doing uh, you know, 10 years in prison for two sales that totaled $31 worth of weed, 10 years, and the judge said, oh, well, I thought I was being lenient because I didn't sentence the grandma so the grandma can raise the kids. So, so you read that story, and then you do a little Google News search, and you find a child rapist in Oklahoma getting away with a 20-year sentence, 19 years suspended for probation, one year in uh, time served, right? Basically walking the streets after you know admitting to a child rape. And these things drive you crazy. They do. They drive you crazy after a while having to report on these things, uh, reporting on people losing their lives, having their, you know, their careers ruined, uh, losing their freedom, take, having their kids taken away, all over the use of cannabis. It's just maddening. And it becomes more maddening when you look around you. You may remember, I'm going to take a little detour here. You may remember a John Carpenter movie from the early 80s called They Live. And if you've never seen it, get on Netflix and go watch it. They Live. And the uh, protagonist of the story, Rowdy Roddy Piper, a pro wrestler, uh, is just a Joe Everyman who finds a pair of sunglasses that when he puts them on, he can see the world for what it really is and that we're all being controlled by these evil alien creatures. That aside, sometimes when you're in the marijuana movement, it feels like you've got those glasses on. And you can see the world for what it is. And you look around and you see, oh my God, every commercial on the TV is for boner pills or happy pills or beer or, you know, more boner pills or boner pills with beer. I mean, <laughs> just every commercial you see has something to do with drugs. And then the commercial after it, the PSA says, we're fighting for a drug-free America. <laughs> really? <laughs> have, you, have you watched NASCAR? Have you seen football games? Have you gone to any sports stadiums named after breweries? To say that we are a drug-free country is ludicrous on its face, and yet these are the things we're told from the time we're kids in school with D.A.R.E. programs and such, war on drugs that don't have barcodes, and it drives you crazy after a while. And you just start to kind of, like, how many different ways can I express how insane it is to lock people up for a plant and how a crime against nature and humanity it is to uh, restrict us from using industrial hemp? I mean, really, that's that's the tragedy of prohibition, really. Beyond us smoking pot or beyond the medicine thing of it is the industrial hemp part of it, that we are ignoring this most useful of crops is just insane because not even because it's a drug, but because it's related to something that's a drug. It's like banning powdered sugar because it looks like cocaine. It makes no sense whatsoever. So it starts to drive you crazy. And I have to remember that sometimes when I'm looking through the news and I'm reading the antics of people that, I have on the pages of my blog and in this show called Guano Loco, you know, batshit crazy. Uh, and I have to remember, like, you know, they know the same facts I know. And maybe it's just, I've maybe some of us have, you know, certain barriers in our brains that keep us from tripping over the edge on these things and other people don't. And confronted with this madness of the war on drugs, they become true believer-ish and martyrs and zealots and, and, you know, I guess I'm trying to find some sort of, um, I don't know, respect or, or trying to empathy, I guess is the word I'm looking for. Empathy for these people who really do, I, I believe they're sincere. I have to believe they're sincere. I have to believe that these guys that do the crazy antics and, and 
you know, shouting from the rooftops like they do. I have to believe they're sincere because the other, the other direction to take this has to do with comments that I've seen many times. The other frustrating thing about being in the marijuana movement is that there are a lot of conspiracy theory type folks, right? And and I don't want to go too much into that as to which ones are true and which ones I don't, you know, that's not the point here. But there's a lot of people that in, in, get themselves involved in magical ideation, conspiratorial thinking. And I've read more than one, on more than one occasion, a friend of mine who's an activist or being directed to me personally, where someone will say, well, you're obviously a plant. You're obviously a plant working for the government. You're, you're COINTELPRO. My younger listeners, go look that up, COINTELPRO. You're COINTELPRO, right? It's secret, you know, Manchurian candidates working against us from inside, moles in the system working for normal to secretly keep it illegal so we can make money defending people in small-time misdemeanor marijuana cases. All right. So we get this conspiratorial thinking that goes on, and this, this charge of being a narc or undercover COINTELPRO after a while, when you see these crazy guys doing weird, wacky stuff in some of these states, you, that starts to become an attractive explanation. <laughs> you start to go, well, either this guy is really nuts or he's purposefully doing this to make the movement look bad. Maybe, maybe that's what it is. So I don't want to go there. So I have to believe these guys are sincere, that they really want, you know, marijuana legalized and they have their objections to, you know, one plant and six ounces or whatever the, the latest uh, uh, proposal is going to be. It has to be that way. It's, it's, it's driving a lot of us crazy out there. And, and it drives our government crazy as well. I mean, you have somebody like uh, Barack Obama, who early on in his career is talking about the decriminalization of marijuana, that the war on drugs is an utter failure. We need to rethink and decriminalize our marijuana laws. He has never been a proponent of legalization. That's been clear. But at least in his early days would propose that we ought to rethink and decriminalize. And now can't even go near decriminalization, would never touch it with a 10-foot pole, et cetera. And I got to think he's a, a reasonable guy who can think through the issues. He smoked weed. He did coke when he was a kid. I, I think he knows it's not the demon devil drugs that they've been told that they are. I mean, he became president, right? So I think he's got to know the truth about this. And I think, I think there's so many people in the government and in the, the law enforcement and politics and all these industries that, that know the truth about marijuana, that it's really not that harmful. And you start to try to figure out, well, how, why is this insanity continuing then? What are the parts, you know, because obviously the explanations were being given. We've got to stop people from using a dangerous drug. Ah, bullshit. It's not a dangerous drug. We've, we've kind of, we kind of settled that, right? You know, since the 60s, since the 50s, you know, since the 30s, since America's been, people have been smoking weed and, you know, most of them by and large aren't a problem for society. We know it's not that dangerous and you can't give us the dangerous drug argument when you're simultaneously allowing us to sell and buy cigarettes and alcohol. That, that dangerous drug argument don't wash. You're not trying to protect us from ourselves, obviously. So the, the, the ex explanations, the excuses we've been given obviously can't be true. So you start trying to look at, well, what's underneath here? And, you know, John Lennon said it best back in the day, you know, follow the money. And you start to follow the money on the drug war. Why does this insanity continue? Well, you start to see prison guards unions where the, the prison guards have gone up from, in just the past five years, gone from about 23,000 prison guards in California to 32,000 prison guards in California, whose average salaries went from 2005, about $44,000 a year, to now about $73,000 a year. Average salaries, $73,000 a year, 32. It's, they are at job fairs, these prison guard unions are at job fairs touting their industry, promoting it as the growth industry. The, the, here's a career where you can move up and have a single salary job to support your family with benefits that pay 80% pensions when you leave for life, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, hell yeah, you know, locking people up and warehousing them is good business in a lot of places. You start to see behind the insanity and you start to realize that the war on drugs really isn't that crazy after all, if you know why it's really being fought, right? Once you start to understand what's really going on there, it starts to make a whole lot of sense. When you start to look at uh, the, the competitive industries that would have to fight against an industrial hemp crop, how they might not like to have that competition. When you uh, look at the governments around the world that are following the U.S. in lockstep and all of these treaties, you know, U.N. single convention treaties that were locked into and so many states and so many laws and this, this web of legislation that, that keeps prohibition in action. 
And of course, you can look at Wall Street. You can look at the bankers that are making so much money laundering that drug money. You can look at the government that is funding its black ops, you know, off the books operations uh, by using the funds, the proceeds of drugs. Uh, you can look at the reporting from the 80s and Gary Webb and the San Jose Mercury about the CIA funneling cocaine into the into L.A. And, and it's just it's madness and it's driving us all crazy. And of course, we know the simple solution. That's the that's probably the most maddening part of it is we all know that it should just be legal that we can treat it like wine, we can treat it like alcohol. We have models for dealing with this and letting adults be adults. And that's the most maddening part of it, is knowing what we have to do, knowing what has to happen, having all these crazy roadblocks in our way. I just wish a few of these roadblocks weren't supposedly on our side. All right, I'm Radical Russ. Thanks for joining us here for The Rant. Appreciate it, everybody being here.